Hey fellow babies, welcome back to Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. On our last legs, this is our next to last episode if we don't get some more subscribers. So please, if you have four bucks a month and you don't need it anymore, help Shane out because he's barely able to make ends meet running this site and he's negative cash flow, which means he's not getting enough of your four dollars to keep things going. We need a few more of you guys to sign up. Please go to Sifted and sign up. All right, our first question this week from the Sifted website from Mr. 60. What are the best and worst changes you have seen in the gaming industry since you took on the portfolio? Um, worst first. You know, I think the worst thing is that games got expensive and people spent more time playing sequels and we squeezed out a lot of good game companies. So I think it's unhealthy for the industry overall to have Atari essentially gone, have Midway gone, have THQ gone, have Acclaim gone, Interplay, 3DO. You know, these guys were like, they, every one of those guys I mentioned had something that was worth playing. I mean, they really did. Um, and it's nice that, you know, Brian Fargo's out there, he was the Interplay founder with you know in exile and he's making fun little games but it, it's not the same you know and thq i mean you can say what you want to about their games i loved games like warhammer you know i mean they you still have saints row being made by deep silver but they're all kind of in bankruptcy guys kind of gobbled up port wwe still being made but so many games aren't red faction remember red faction whether you liked it or not it was nice that we had that option uh, Midway, you know, Mortal Kombat survived because Warner Brothers was making it, but my God, I mean, even their bad games were fun. I mean, they, it's just like, even Defender was fun. Um, so, you know, I miss all those guys. I, you know, I miss the variety, and I think the worst thing that's happened in the games business is that we've we've gotten to sequel-itis, and I think we've, we've dumbed down the content where Everything is just a sequel to the last big thing you played. And so I think consumers have fewer choices. Um, best change, probably realistically, I like this whole migration to free DLC and microtransactions. Because you don't actually have to spend money to play games. I mean, you can buy the game, you can play Overwatch forever. You just you don't need to dress up your character and spend money, and you can play Titanfall forever free DLC. You can play Halo Five forever free DLC. I think that's a nice trend. Star Wars Battlefront's going to do that. Grand Theft Auto Online. I know half of the people who play GTA Online spend money, but guess what? Half don't, and they have fun. So the idea that you can stay engaged with a game for what when did gta online come out probably three and a half years ago no two and a half years ago three and a half years ago yeah spring of uh, 14. three and a half years later and those guys did a content drop last week they do content drops all the time you pay you pay 60 bucks for gta and you get new stuff every probably two months from that game that's awesome and you know so that's that is a a game developer saying we exist to delight the fans and I gotta say I spend money in those games because they keep giving me free stuff so what the hell I spend money you should um, but I think that's great if you can't afford it and you can only if you only can afford a console and 60 bucks buy GTA you got three and a half years of fun I mean it's just amazing to me so best that people are giving more content away for free games are longer um, I, you know now people bitch and moan when a single player campaign is only eight hours. Man, they used to be two. Our next question from Sifted from Odin5. Odin, if you were running EA Sports, and I am not, how would you inject new life into its sports franchises? Would the games as a platform strategy generate enough revenue for EA? Is it smarter just to release roster and other updates? via DLC every season and save on development costs. Okay, the last question, no. Um, they, they, really, they really are uh, kind of addicted to your $60, so they really don't want to just keep giving you, you know, DLC updates, and they can't charge you 60 bucks for DLC. 
I mean, you would never pay 60 bucks every year for FIFA just to get the roster updates. They have to sell you a new game. And the trick on the new game is it pretty much makes you start Ultimate Team again. You know, so that's been their hook. Um, they're making a buttload from Ultimate Team. And so they really need to sell you a new game every year. Now, you don't, you don't all buy a new game every year. I mean, if they sell 18 million to FIFA, there's probably 30 million people who buy FIFA and probably 10 million of them buy it every year and 10 million buy it every other year and 10 million buy it every three years. You know, so it kind of adds up to 18. But, um, and if you play it for three years, sure, you can keep your ultimate team going. Um, but they really like that revenue stream. Um, I have asked them, and so I'll go back to your first question, if you were running a sports, how would you inject new life? What I would do is I would keep charging 60 bucks, but I would tell people, you get $60 worth of gold in your ultimate team bank account. And so you just paid 60 bucks for the game, but we're gonna give you $60 worth of cards, or player cards and training, whatever else you can spend money on. And we're gonna let you build an ultimate team. So every single person who buys the game has an incentive to log into ultimate team and spend 60 bucks. Now, I actually proposed that to an unnamed senior executive at EA. I don't want to embarrass him or her. Um, and I said, why don't you do that? And the answer was, well, because the whales who spend 300 bucks would spend 240. And I'm like, no, the whales would spend 360. And this executive goes, oh, you're wrong. And I said, how many free-to-play games do you, do you play? and spend money in, and of course the answer was none. And I said, well, I play about 10, and I spend money in all of them, and if you give me free shit, I spend more. They trained me to spend money by giving me stuff for free. So, to answer your question, if I was running EA Sports, I would give everybody who buys FIFA or, or NHL or NBA free stuff $60 worth of free stuff. I would have daily free drawings. I would have tournaments with free coins or whatever. I would give everybody as much free stuff as you can because they told me between 60 and 70% of the people who play FIFA actually even try Ultimate Team. And then a little more than half of them spend money in the game. So let's just round up. 70% of the people who play FIFA um, try Ultimate Team. Half of them, 35%, spend money. Why not 100%? And you can't get to 100% unless you give people an incentive to try it in the first place. What they could do is say, you bought your game, $60, you get $60 of gold in the game, and in order to use the first of your $60, you have to slap a credit card down. Now it's an Xbox or PlayStation. Most of us have a credit card, but we don't all. Make people put it down. Guess what? After you burn through the money and you realize you didn't buy the right stuff, you're trained and then you hit that credit card. So that's what I would do. Hope that answers your question. The next question from Twitter from at Click Cyber Cafe. <laughs> Nintendo Switch ripped out the Blu-ray unit and nobody died. Is it the right time for disc-free consoles? How will we play our DVDs if we had disc-free consoles? Um, my wife just, what movie did we watch? Oh, we just rented A Dog's Purpose. I have no idea why. Uh, Redbox, I think one of our neighbors actually lent it to us and we kept it an extra day and gave him a dollar or two. We rented A Dog's Purpose and I haven't watched a DVD since I got my two most recent consoles. I have a PS4 Pro and an Xbox One S. I haven't rented a DVD since last fall, which is I guess when I got them both. And so I pop it in the PlayStation 4, and guess what? I had to download the DVD player app. It, the whole, the update took like, I don't know, minutes. I mean, five, six, 10 minutes. And I did that just to watch a DVD. So I think they're really important because you never know when your wife is gonna go to Redbox and rent a dog's purpose, which I highly recommend if you're a dog person. It's actually a really cute movie. Um, but I don't know, who cares? You know, I mean, People buy discs because they're good gifts. People buy discs because they want to trade them in. People buy discs because they want to give them away. I give away games after I've played them. So I don't think it is ever the right time for disc free. 
Um, I think you give consumers a choice. If they want to trade it in, they should have a choice to do so. If they want to give it away, they should have a choice to do so. If they want to keep a shelf and display all their discs, they should have a right to do so. Um, I get it, you know, you think, well, music went that way, but not really. I mean, the music industry still sells over 100 million CDs in the U.S. a year. It's kind of shocking that they still have them, but they do. Um, so, no, I think if consumers want discs, give it to them. Uh, if you force them to play a disc-free console, then they won't have discs. And the Switch has, what do you call those, cartridges? Cards, yeah. yeah, cards. I mean, they're like SD cards. They have very poor tasting uh, SD cards. If you follow iJustine on Twitter, she just tasted a uh, Switch card for the first time. I don't know why it took her so long. Um, I read that they tasted bitter. I tried one. I think I tried one on camera. I tried, yeah, I tried one right away. It's like, bleh. yeah, that was actually, I think, my Zelda, my Zelda cartridge. That shows I had two of them. I don't know what. It might have been. I think oh, it was. oh yeah. Ugh. Switch is gonna taste bad no matter what. Uh, it tasted bad. In any case, no, I don't think so. Let's get to our last question this week in our next to last episode ever, if you don't join Sifted, uh, from Sifted, from OT Apps. What factors are considered when deciding whether a game is going to get a collector's edition? Is it a calculated gamble by the publisher or do the statue manufacturers subsidize the cost of production in return for marketing promotion? The former, and it's not a gamble. So, ah, I've got to get my Halo thing which I'm sure wasn't part of a collector's edition. But when you get a collector's edition, you get some crap like this. This has a stand. I haven't even opened it yet, but it's cool, huh? Um, do you remember the movie The Jerk? Probably you don't, because most of you guys are too young to have seen it. But uh, in the movie Steve Martin, who I'm seeing on Sunday. I'm going to see Steve Martin in concert on Sunday. Uh, in the movie Steve Martin, got a job at a carnival and he was supposed to guess people's weight and if he failed he had to give them a prize and he said i don't get it he goes how do you make money if i have to give people a prize every time because i'm never going to guess their weight and the carnival owner said well you see what i'm giving them is a bunch of worthless crap and steve martin goes wait a minute so they give you money and you sell you give them worthless crap in return and the owner said yes and he goes Profit deal. That's one of my lines. So this is worthless crap, okay? I'm sure this looks really cool, but truthfully, this is plastic. So what could this possibly cost to make? A buck? I have no idea what they charge for this because I got it for free. I think I'm gonna open it up and look. I wanna see what it looks like. <laughs> but but the point is that a collector's edition has a bunch of crap like this, okay? And and people love this shit, and I among them, okay? Ooh, look, this thing is, is designed to, to withstand a nuclear attack. And you know, I'm opening this, I'm destroying the value of this, because in the box, I could probably sell this on eBay for something. You're what not do, selling anything on eBay. What do you think, how much could I get for this on eBay? Yeah, 10 bucks? 15 bucks, maybe. Exactly. You know, I've got my Link statue, I never brought it home. I've got my Link on a GameCube statue. Do you have one of those? Uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I, I, someone told me, and I haven't looked, that those are 200 bucks on eBay. Really? Yeah. People say that stuff all the time, and then I go look, and they're full of it. Like, people are listing them for that much, but nobody's bidding on them. Ooh. You know what? When I said this is worthless crap, this is metal. I like oh, it. There you go. I like it more. Okay, so this is metal. But, and it's got a stand. But... This is actually pretty nice. You, you, cool, yeah. you got to feel this. It's metal. It's got some weight. Yeah, it's actually nice. But still, it's not very expensive crap. So what happens is, look at that collector's edition. Collector's edition is like a hundred bucks. You're paying forty bucks extra for a bunch of worthless crap. And so, you know, what was the Fallout thing that came? The Pip Boy edition. Pip Boy. More than hundred, right? It had like that plastic. Like yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the thing that holds your phone, right. and I could never get my phone app to work. It would never work. Yeah. But yeah, but you know that was probably three bucks worth of stuff. You know they give you ten dollars worth of stuff, and they charge you forty. Profit deal. So I would not get too worried about any of the guys who make collector's editions losing money. They are not. I'm going to put this on display. This is not my new favorite toy. Uh, 
it's, I just got something cool. Um, so, no, they can afford to do it. It's not a calculated gamble. Nobody subsidize, subsidizes anything. Um, and the thing that's really fun about the collector's editions is they limit production. So you don't actually make very many. So the calculated gamble is kind of scarcity value. I've said this a couple times this week. Supply and demand. If you have very low supply, typically there's pretty high demand. Guitar Hero is a gamble because it requires a peripheral. Collector's edition is not so much. People like it. I got my lunchbox with my fault my Fallout 3. I remember that. I got my Pip Boy with Fallout 4, the collector's edition. People love that stuff. So no, not a gamble at all. It's uh, it's a profit deal. Thank you for joining us this week on Pactor Factor on Sifted.net. Hope you are a member. Uh, Shane is going to shut the site down if we can't get some more members. So please sign up. Please, if you got four bucks a month, there's no obligation. Four bucks at, at a time. Turn it off whenever you want to. Um, if you choose not to join or you don't believe it's worth the value or you don't have the money, watch us on uh, YouTube as long as we're still on, which is only going to be another week or two. And uh, the price of watching for free is you follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. Thanks very much for joining us. See you next week. Black Ops 1, I had a problem with Black Ops 1. Um, I had my screen go blank and I didn't know it. Like there's a, there's a glitch in my game and it went black. And I thought it was part of the game. And the whole screen was black except the distance counter, you know, that says yeah, how many yeah. steps or feet away you are. And so it was just a glitch in my game. And I was like, oh, this is supposed to be at night. I'm supposed to be blind. And I, and I, but I couldn't figure out where I was going and I just knew how far away I was and I couldn't figure out to shoot. And I probably played that level for like 15 minutes before I realized it was a glitch.